So Bimal ji has also joined now. Hi Rajat, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. I would uh, warm welcome, sir. Thank you, so, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, sir, your camera, sir, I think, udar se off hai, shayad. Udar se off hai na? Just a minute, just a yeah. minute. Yeah. Am I there yes, now? Yes, yes. Now Bimal ji is also with us. Okay. So uh, Bimal ji would be very glad to know that we all almost received 2,500 plus registrations. That's we great. have with us 600 plus people right now who That's have great. already joined and waiting for you. That's so, great. Yeah, so to introduce Bimal ji first, so kya bolu sir, matlab aapke aapke liye to alfaz nahi milte mere. Fir bhi main kuch char line bolna chahunga. So when I met Bimal ji, Bimal ji first time, I remember he said ki tujhse tera mujhse hai janmo ka tere mujhse hai janmo ka nata koi yu hi nahi dil lubhata koi. So I remember those lines. So uske reply mein sir main zaroor bolna chahunga. Main kutha ye webinar jab se aap padha rahe hain. महक उठाए वेबिनार जब से आप पधा रहे हैं ऐसा एहसास होता है कि कई जन्मों से आप हमारे हैं अरे वाह थैंक यू थैंक यू सो एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर यू गिफ्टेड दिस टू मी आई स्टिल हैव दिस एंड ग्रेट यस यस सो ही इज विमल जी इज वन ऑफ माय यू नो मेंटर एंड मेंटर तो आप सबके लिए भी शायद होंगे बट मेरे लिए बड़े भाई समान है मैं उन्हें बहुत मानता हूं जितना भी जीएसटी आज जानता हूं शायद इन्हीं की वजह से जानता हूं So and nice. one of the most humble and kind-hearted person. Baki uh, officially to sir, first, मतलब आपके क्या introduction दे? Everybody knows you well. So I think yeah, over to you. And to the audience, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for uh, uh, so your precious time. And please stay with us for the next two hours. And we assure you that you will enjoy a lot. Please sir, over to you. Uh, thanks, Rajat. What a lovely introduction. आज जो तुमने गाना गाया ना तेरा मुझसे है पहले का नाता कोई ये गाना आज सुबह से कोई और भी मेरे को, कोई और भी गा रहा है उसने मुझे दो चार बार सुना भी दिया है अच्छा पता नहीं कोई इंसिडेंस है अच्छा तो कई बार अच्छा होता है सुन के अच्छा होता है और अच्छा लगता भी है आई एम थैंकफुल टू ईच ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु आर जॉइनिंग टुडे ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर वेबिनार व्हिच इज मेनली ऑन रिवर्स चार्ज मेथड बट लेट मी एट द आउटसेट thanks to you and to optotax for giving me this opportunity and what a lovely introduction and the brief profile you have said within one line you have concluded everything um thanking each of the participants who are taking out their time and watching this webinar on rcm before i start uh, i look, i would like to see that in a chat box that everyone is uh, getting me they are hearing me properly my video is there they are watching me properly can you say something in your chat box yes it is going fine so that i can start right away on reverse charge method so gurinder ji is there gurinder pal singh he is saying raman goel is saying lot many guys are there bhagwati is there so everyone now started now uh, you know saying something yes 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 all right all right so thank you very much to each one of you let me start uh before i start on technical point i just want to pass on my deepest condolences to evergreen actor rishi kapoor and irfan khan yesterday this is a great loss for the film industry but great loss to every watchers those who are watching movie what a act they were actor in their own uh, excellency and capability i admire both of them irfan khan and rishi kapoor my deepest condolences and we wish and pray to the almighty god for their soul rest in peace so let me start with this a positive note and this is on reverse charge method so what i will do today audience i'm sure you are having one paper and pen with you which you should keep before you and then what we would be doing we would be discussing reverse charge method in holistic perspective i will first give the brief background of reverse charge method in gst and then i will touch base certain important issues in reverse charge method i will take up then open issues then i will hand over to rajat for his uh, presentation on optotax and once he finishes his presentation again i will come back and discuss in detail the reverse charge notification and some of the entries which are very important and at the same time i will take your questions which you are going to ask me and you are looking for the answer 
whatever related question I'm getting with the topic, I will definitely respond back at the time when I'm delivering the topic. Nevertheless, last 15 minutes, I parked it, kept it only for question answer session. So whatever question you are willing and liking to ask on reverse charge method would be my pleasure to give a reply back to you. So what you have to do, you have to walk the talk with me. You have to go all along with me. You have to really listen the provision carefully. You have to really get into that redeem which I'm starting with and then slowly and slowly we'll take it further. I'm going to make the technical discussion as well. I will make it practical for you and we'll combine together to the best for your understanding and my deliberation. Let's start with the reverse charge method. See, if you look at GST law, or you can go back to pre-GST law, like under service tax. Generally, I'm using the term generally, the levy and chargeability is on supplier of goods or supplier of services. So there are two parties involved in any transaction. One is the supplier, another one is the recipient. Generally and normally, the levy is on supplier of goods or supplier of services, which is called forward charge method. I may be discussing a little bit background so that uh, those who are listening uh, first time or want to gain something, they can grasp the provision accordingly. And then uh, we can take it to a little second level or third level of technical discussion. So I say generally, and normally chargeability on supplier of goods or services, which is called forward charge method. What is the reverse charge? Just contrast. Section 2, subsection 98 of CGST Act says reverse charge method means the method wherein recipient of goods or services recipient of goods or services is supposed to discharge the gst liability meaning thereby it's a recipient who will discharge the liability of gst that is called reverse charge method so it is going against the normal concept of forward charge and in reverse charge is a CPN who is liable. He is deemed that he is the person liable to pay tax and uh, make the compliances of GST law and rules thereunder. So recipient is supposed to pay the liability. Now, when you look at recipient and when you go to chargeable section, section 9 of CGST Act, Section 5 of IGST Act. I'm reading Section 9 of CGST Act to draw levy section for intrastate supplies within state. When uh, supplier and place of supply both are in same state. When I'm going to Section 5 of IGST Act, which is chargeable section for interstate supply, meaning thereby location of supplier and place of supply in different state. So section 9, subsection 1 for intrastate, section 5, subsection 1 for interstate, this is a levy chargeable section. There are two sections which is very, very important. You may note down section 9, subsection 3, under CGST Act, correspondingly, you can read under IGST under Section 5, Subsection 3. What the section says, Bimal, there will be specified goods or specified services. You can say notified goods or notified services for which recipient is liable to discharge GST liability under reverse charge method. So I said for notified goods and for notified services. 
So section 9, subsection 3, section 5, subsection 3 of IGST Act. Now you would be interested to know, okay, sir, you said notified goods. Where from I can check what all goods are notified for reverse charge liability? There only recipient will pay GST under reverse charge method. So before I answer, I want to check my audience, those who are watching me. If I post this query to you for notified goods under section 9, subsection 3, under which notification it is notified? Can I see in your chat box? Please. Can I see in your chat box? Yes, please. Which notification I must look at? to find out notified goods for reverse charge liability. Yes, please. So I'm looking for the answer. Asis Goyal has said, Manisa has responded. OK, a lot many answer I'm getting. Bikas is responding. Jitendra is responding. OK, OK, OK. All right. So I'm getting a divergent answer now divergent answer now see before uh, we wanted to start this presentation webinar rajat was telling me sir why can't we start with the technical point i said uh, rajat wait 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 you have to really check the acumen of my audience whether really they know all the provision basic provision which is almost now two years plus in GST because these are applicable from 1st July 2017. So Manish Hirani has also responded. Not many guys are responding. I'm appreciating each one of you because you are responding because I'm asking you all. Now, those who have given the right answer and those who are giving wrong answer, kindly correct on that piece of paper so that after this today's webcast webinar for two hours you should feel like that you know much of the things about reverse charge method for notified goods under reverse charge liability you have to look at notification number 04 4 oblique 2017 4 oblique 2017 so now this notification you must know since i posted this notification to you my next question my next question only for such notified goods there is reverse charge liability and recipient has to discharge gst liability for other than notified goods, let's say those goods are not notified under reverse charge notification for oblique 2017, not notified. It is not falling under the notified goods for reverse charge liability. Then the charge would be forward charge or reverse charge. Just write down in your this uh, comment chat box forward charge or reverse charge forward charge or reverse charge please write down Karan has written a detailed notification number but nevertheless you please write down it would be forward charge or reverse charge <laughs> base judgment <laughs> one person is saying uh, base judgment <laughs> another is it would be forward charge method forward charge method all right all right all right very well said very well said so this audience is a learned audience. I'm liking it. Next. Now section 9, subsection 3 also says for notified services, for notified services, there will be reverse charge liability in the hands of recipient of service recipient has to discharge the gst liability please tell me which notification i should look at which notification i should look at to identify 
what all services are notified for reverse charge liability write the notification number avijit has written anand has written everyone oh, liking now arun kumar has given some wrong answer and everyone is trying their best putting whatever coming to their mind all right well done it is 13 oblique 2017 13 oblique 2017 so what i did i did that under section 9 subsection 3 if you read section 5 subsection 3 of igst act so 9 subsection 3 cgst act section 5 subsection 3 igst act there will be notified goods and notified services for reverse charge liability and we have concluded for goods for oblique 2017 and for services 13 oblique 2017 similarly under igst act for section 5 subsection 3 there is one notification which talks about these specified services are going to fall under reverse charge liability under igst under igst section 5 subsection 3 tell me the notification number i'm looking for and why i'm saying so i'm not checking your knowledge believe me i'm not checking your knowledge rather i'm preparing you that tomorrow if you want to really do reverse charge by yourself you would be knowing what all notification what all relevant provision you must look at to grasp reverse charge liability. So still I haven't received a correct answer. Himani is writing. Yes, Benkates has written. Okay. So some of the guys are giving good answer, but uh, I'm finding wrong answer also. So there's nothing wrong when we are learning. 10 oblique 2017. 10 oblique 2017. Those who are not able to answer, or giving wrong answer or those who are giving right answer must cross check 10 public 2017 now these are the notification i suggested to you very well gites agreed and appreciated so those who are giving right answer my thumbs up to them those who are giving wrong answer my two thumbs up to them because they are learning first time okay all right i've said section 9 subsection 3 now my question to all of you now you pause in the chat box and answer my question being a notified goods or services you may have two kind of supplier one who is already registered but supplying notified goods or supplying notified services under reverse charge method. So you may be registered supplier, you are registered under GST, but you are supplying notified goods or notified services as per that notification 4 oblique 2017 or 13 oblique 2017 respectively. Now, if you are registered, and registered supplier will it going to be and continue to be reverse charge this is my simple question you are registered supplier supplying a notified goods or services since you are registered will it continue to be reverse charge that is my question you say yes or no so your answer would be y or n no that's what i'm looking for tell me the answer now if you are registered supplying notified goods or services will it going to be yes perfect so i'm getting mixed answer but the maximum are saying it continue to be reverse charge method so registration what is the thumb rule coming out now registration of supplier is not important registration of supplier is not important to determine reverse charge liability if it is supply of notified goods or notified services then it is going to be reverse charge method 
Am I clear? Now move to section 9, subsection 4. I said I am going to tell you the provision. Then we'll start with the case study. Section 9, subsection 4 under CGST Act. Similarly, you look at section 5, subsection 4. This provision got a lot of hue and cry in the market. A lot of hue and cry in the market. What is section 9, subsection 4 says? If you are a registered person, recipient rather, if you are a registered recipient, in taxable territory, in taxable territory, and you are receiving supplies of goods or services from unregistered supplier, unregistered supplier. So unregistered supplier supplying goods and services to registered recipient. Section 9, subsection 4, reverse charge method was applicable till 12th October 2017. Till 12th October 2017 and thereafter this provision kept in abeyance till 1st of February 2019. Till 1st of February 2019 and later on this section uh, got amended and this amended section says this 9.4 going to be applicable only for specified class of taxable person for specified goods or services when procured from unregistered supplier. So subsequently provision got changed. From 1st February 2019, 9 subsection 4 is applicable only for specified class of taxable person, recipient, and only for specified goods or services when procured from unregistered supplier. Later, this 9 subsection 4 one notification, 7 oblique 2019, 7 oblique 2019 got issued effective from 1st of April 2019. So what are the reverse charge under section 9 subsection 4 stated on or after 1st April 2019? You must be knowing that landlord and developer, builder, landlord and builder, there was change in GST for affordable and non-affordable housing. For affordable housing, 1% with no ITC, 5% for non-affordable housing with no ITC. Now, the 7 oblique 2019 has put a condition for RREP project. RREP project that they have to procure minimum 80% from registered supplier. And this is to be calculated on financial year basis. Input and input services. If it is not purchased to that extent and there is a shortfall, then to the extent of shortfall, there would be reverse charge liability under section 9, subsection 4. If you purchase cement from unregistered supplier, then 28% GST rate. If you purchase capital goods from unregistered supplier, then the rate which is applicable on such capital goods will be applied for reverse charge liability under section 9, subsection 4, rate with notification 7 oblique 2019. 
so this is only going forward it is only for the promoter who is a developer or builder to discharge the gst liability and the reverse charge method so i'm not going to discuss for real estate sector now i'm just trying to draw your attention that this nine subsection 4 now exist only for this real estate affordable housing project or non affordable housing project and wherein you are using this concessional rate that the minimum criteria purchased from registered supplier in case shortfall reverse charge liability exists under section 9 sub section 4 and when i say reverse charge liability exists even though your rate would be 1% for affordable housing but if there is a shortfall in purchase from registered supplier then that shortfall would be taxable at the rate of 18% for input and input services please bear in your mind 18% cement 28% and capital goods as the rate applicable on capital goods as per rate notification so you can read the similar provision under section 5 sub section 4 igst act now left out with the last sub section of chargeable section section 9 sub section 5 similarly you can go back to igst act section 5 sub section 5 and this section says for specified services please you have to listen my all the word carefully you have to listen all the word carefully that's the reason i'm telling you it is only for specified services notified services which is sub apply through e-commerce operator then that e-commerce operator would be deemed as a supplier of service and he will discharge all gst liability like o o your room ola and uber urban clap these are the services notified under section 9 sub section 5 and such e-commerce operator being the supplier of service and they have to comply with the gst law and discharge the gst liability in case such e-commerce operator is having no presence in india then their representative has to take registration and discharge the gst liability if no physical presence and no representative then they have to compulsorily appoint a person in india for compliance of gst law and discharging gst liability under section 9 sub section 5 so overall i given the provision background of reverse charge method now i'm going to touch base now certain other issues and then i will take the open issues one after another before i touch base i want to check once again one part this question you need to answer it now see i said the reverse charge notification there are two more topic where you must know the rate as well and why rate is important let me tell you i am a supplier of a particular service let's assume why that rate is important for clarifying that i am creating this example let's say i am supplying a particular service and this is falling under reverse charge method reverse charge method let's say advocate giving services to a business entity and it is beyond threshold amount so as it is not exempted so as it is not exempted so advocate giving services to business entity it is falling under reverse charge notification 13 oblique 2017 but at what rate what rate you will apply 
for discharging the GST liability. So it is important to know that what all goods services are notified for reverse charge under section 9 subsection 3. But simultaneously, it is also important to know what is the rate applicable on such goods or services which is notified under reverse charge liability. So when I say rate, question goes to you. If I talk about goods rate notification, so let's say there is specified goods, raw cotton, supplied by agriculturist to a registered person. It is falling under notification for public 2017. But what rate you will discharge? You must know the rate on that raw cotton. So for identifying the rate on goods, which notification you will look at? Please tell me which notification you will look at. Please tell me. I just want to check the answer in the chat box. I am just trying to uh, give gripping on the subject matter. Though reverse charge. So maybe you are saying rate. But I asked the notification number. And Ritesh has responded. Lipika is responding. Mayank has responded. Yes. So still uh, for goods, I am not getting C. Uh, now, Rajat, you will agree and appreciate. Had I started with technical discussion without giving this background, then the topic should not have taken the shape which I wanted to draw. Totally agree, sir. Now, now for goods, rate notification would be 1 oblique 2017. 1 oblique 2017. So Sumit has rightly said that we have to identify first goods and services and a reverse charge notification. Then we need to know rate for goods 1 oblique 2017 and for services write down the notification number for services. Write down the notification number. Yes, Rakhi, write down. Yes, I know that you have written 1 oblique 17 central tax rate. So Rakhi, appreciate it. Now I'm uh, posting to all of you for services, which rate notification you will look at. So tell me, yes, Sumit is saying, Mayank is saying, yes, all right. So everyone is now pumping. Amit, you have given wrong answer. See, lot many guys responding, but still I'm trying to catch who is giving right and wrong. It's 11 oblique 2017. 11 oblique 2017. Good. Perfect. So you got two point. Clubbing now third point. Clubbing third point. Okay, look, look at, look at. Very, it's a very well way. That is the way I'm uh, looking that you should learn RCM today. Let's say... I'm a supplier of goods or services. Assume, assume hypothetically. And my supply, which I'm supplying goods and services, are exempted, are not chargeable to GST, are exempted. Now, please tell me, and this question I'm asking you, please tell me, if these goods or services, let's say falling under notified notification for oblique 2017 or 13 oblique 2017, but otherwise exempted, otherwise exempted with a reverse charge method applicable, if these notified goods or services are exempted with a reverse charge GST liability need to be discharged. By the recipient, say yes or no. Say yes or no. So I have made the question different. So no, I'm not looking for notification number. Please. Whether reverse charge applicable or not. That is what my question is. So still in the audience, I'm getting yes, no, yes, no, both together. So look at our preparation. If goods and services are exempted, just look at the thumb rule. If goods and services are exempted, 
then it is neither taxable under forward charge nor taxable under reverse charge. Simple, if goods and services are exempted, it is neither taxable under forward charge nor taxable under reverse charge. So when I said exempted, so maybe you have to look at like advocate giving services to business entity and business entity only 5 lakh rupees. So maybe it is exempted. If exempted, then also advocate services not falling under GST liability, though notified service under reverse charge notification. Tell me if you have to look at goods, which is exempted. Which notification you will look at? Which notification you will look at? Write down the notification number in your chat box. Write down quickly, faster. Which notification number you will look at for goods exempted? Okay. Two oblique 2017 is two oblique amit. Two oblique 2017 for goods, for goods. See, to topic is only RCM. But when you connect it with from multiple angle, you start getting interest for the topic. When you look at services uh, being exempted, under which notification? Tell me, goods is two oblique 2017. For services exempted in GST, tell me which notification. Okay, okay. All right. Now everyone is pumping in. 12 public 2017. 12 public 2017. Perfect. Now listen. Why I posted this query? What was the reason I posted this query? Listen to me carefully. And this is very, very interesting. Very important. Listen now. Okay, pause, pause. Well appreciated. My all the friends are appreciated. So listen carefully now. Listen carefully. Why I created this query for you? And why I'm telling you all these notification number you need to know? My friends, dear professional colleagues, you must be now drawing the analogy of preparation of RCM method. If I say that a GTA transporter, GTA transporter, as we all know, GTA falling under reverse charge notification, we all know. But if GTA is exporting, let's say, some exempted goods, some exempted goods, and I'm posting this query to all of you. If GTA is export transporting, leave export. Transporting within India, leave export. Transporting exempted goods with a reverse charge method applicable. Say yes or no, RCM applicable. Transporter undertaking transportation of exempted goods. Tell me RCM applicable. RCM applicable. So lot many saying yes, lot many saying no. This is what the interest, this is what the, you know, I want to ignite your mind. That was the region I was posting all these queries. Now, if, if, listen carefully, listen carefully, now listen carefully. Even GTA falling under reverse charge method, but undertaking transportation of certain specified goods, then that is exempted. No reverse charge applicable, no RCM. So unless you know the reverse charge notification number, unless you know the exemption notification number, you will not be able to conclude the matter. So, if transportation of notified goods following exemption notification 12 oblique 2017, 12 oblique 2017, then even though falling under reverse charge, no reverse charge. That's the beauty of learning this RCM. 
so this was the first part of my overview now in that overview i want to touch base some questions quickly and then i will take it further for registration we know that the threshold amount for supplier of goods 40 lakh rupees provided intra state supply 40 lakh rupees and for supplier of service 20 lakh rupees whether you do intra or you do inter 20 lakh rupees there is a threshold amount now tell me if let's say i'm recipient I'm receiving some notified goods or services. Even that is only to the tune of 2 lakh rupees. Or let's say 100 rupees. Only 100 rupees. Why 2 lakh rupees? Only 100 rupees. Which is well below the threshold limit for the registration. Do this recipient require to take registration under GST? Tell me whether any threshold amount to look at for registration under reverse charge if i have procured certain notified goods and services under reverse charge do i have to look at threshold amount see someone saying yes someone saying no someone saying section 24 so next answer next answer okay I want from audience today, I want, uh, we are almost, you know, 900 plus audience now. What I'm looking for the audience, that when I conclude today, you will create one pager. You will create one pager. And that pager, you must have noted down everything, right? You take click of that pager. Click of that pager. And uh, you have to upload that pager on a particular number, which I will give you a little later. So at the end of my session, so that I can check each one of you whether you're really actively participating, doing something good. See, my question was, for reverse charge, do I require to look at any threshold amount? For reverse charge, it is compulsory registration. If you fall under reverse charge liability, Ubas has rightly said, so... Vaisali is also saying the same thing for reverse charge, no threshold amount, compulsory registration. Now, now let me do one case study here. One case study here. One trust fellow came up to me. One trust fellow, trust, trust, you know, NGO. Like temple, like, you know, they are having temple, big temple. They came up to me and they asked, sir, we are trust registered under section 12 AA of IT Act, Income Tax Act. We are doing undertaking charitable activities, which is exempted in 12 public 2017. So what is charitable activities and even spirituality, advancement of religion, spirituality, exempted. Now, this trust posted a query to me, sir. Do we require to take registration? So before I answer anything, I want you guys to make opinion for me. You have to make opinion for me. I charge, uh, you know, one lakh rupees for this opinion. COVID-19 time period. Maybe you can uh, imagine uh, in, uh, you know, uh, invisible way that this money is going to your bank account. This money is going to your bank account. <laughs> okay. Just like Rajat is laughing, I want you to laugh as well. Do this trust require to take registration? This is my first question. Say yes or no. Everyone is writing yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Now, 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 let me tell you, I, I will resolve, I will resolve, I will not leave you open-ended. I will definitely, resolve. when I've taken up this open case study, I will definitely. What opinion I gave, you know? When I charge 1 lakh rupees, then it is not a small time work. 
it must be having some credential in the provision itself which need to be looked at and that's the reason i'm asking you guys had this trust had this trust providing charitable activities as defined in 12 public 2017 exclusively only this activity only this activity which is exempted one exclusively even not a fraction of it taxable so exclusive 100 percent exempted supplies then there is a no, separate provision section 23 subsection 2 clearly says if you are engaged in exclusively supplying exempted goods or services then no registration required but 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 i asked this trust fellow boss you have so many small small shop inside the complex inside the complex which you let out which you let out are you charging rent answer came yes we are charging rent I said, are you taking any services from advocate? Yes, yes, we got two advocates who are fighting our income tax case. Are you paying some legal fees to them? Yes, yes, we are paying legal fees to them. Now I'm posting inquiry. I just created two examples for you. There may be n number of example in n number way. Now this trust whose outward supply is exempted, but Inward, they are taking advocate services. One of outward, which is renting of shops for commercial purpose, which is not exempted. Now, do they require registration? Their 99.5% is the exempted income. 99.5%. Then registration required. Okay. So, Sanjeev, Bhavesh. So, one advocate is also is responding back. All right, then registration age requires. So giving opinion without knowing full fact is not complete. Without knowing full fact is not complete. But I created this example for you. All right, pause, pause, pause. Moving to next topic now. Next topic, which is called time of supply time of supply for reverse charge method very interesting if i say provision you will be thinking what i'm discussing here it has got nothing to do i'm discussing very you know in a very lucid manner so that you understand the meaning of this provision and practically you can apply let's say let's assume i'm an advocate i'm an advocate I'm not registered in GST. My service is falling under notified services 13 oblique 2017. And let's you all become recipient. You all become recipient. Those who are watching me become recipient. I want you to be recipient. Be recipient. Now, this advocate who is not registered giving services to you. It is under notified services. Now, as a recipient, we can take today's date, 30th April 2020. Let's say I've given services to you today. Today. If I say 30th April 2020, maybe uh, some uh, reference or provision will not get tuned. So let's say you have taken these services from me on 1st January. 2020 let's assume so i have changed my example that you have taken advocate services which is under notified services and a reverse charge method on 1st january 2020 now being recipient i'm asking you guys to all of you those who are watching now by when you will discharge GST liability. That the two, three question can come out. Two, three question. You are saying you got my invoice. 
you got my invoice on 1st January 2020. But you have hidden the transaction. You have not reported. Kept under table. Kept under table. My first question to all of you. Can you delay? Can you postpone? Can you delay or can you postpone your reverse charge liability to be paid on this transaction? Tell me. So Anirudh is responding to me. Yes, Anirudh, I've seen your answer. Even Harsit is also responding to me. Yupreet is responding. Sujata is saying only at the time of payment. So Sujata will make payment after two years. Then only she will discharge GST liability. That is the Sujata responding. And those who are not being able to answer in a big term, they are saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So, okay. All right. All right. All right. No need to pay. Oof, they nahi nahi hai. Okay. Okay. Next question. Next question. I will respond back to you, but let me ask you. You have not paid to the advocate. You have not paid to the advocate. You have not paid single penny to me. I have raised my invoice on 1st January 2020. Still, you have to discharge GST liability. Next question. I'm asking, I will give you the provision. You have not paid my consideration of, let's say, 10 lakh rupees. To me, you haven't paid anything. You are thinking, if I have not paid to Bimal Jain, why should I deposit GST liability? I'm posting this query to all of you. Do you require to pay GST of such notified services for which you have not discharged the payment as yet? Tell me yes or no. Okay, Karan. Karan is very active, writing so many things. So quickly he's writing. Okay, Pankaj is also writing. All right, perfect. So looks like uh, now this uh, group is becoming uh, more ignited. Okay, listen, listen. Now listen the answer. I will give you the answer. Listen, listen. Why time of supply provision is important? Time of supply provision is important because as per chargeable section, which you read under section 9 and section 5, it clearly says that we need to charge the tax, deposit the tax in a manner as prescribed. In a manner as prescribed. So for reverse charge, since I was talking about advocate services, I need to go back to section 13, subsection 3 of CGST Act, which is time of supply provision for reverse charge method for the services. It says time of supply will be earliest of two date. Earliest of two date. What are those two date? Being recipient, you are liable to discharge GST liability. So what two date you will look at and which is earliest? The first date of payment to Bimal Jain, which you didn't do. You have not paid. Sujata was saying, no, no, I have not paid. I will not deposit GST. Sujata was saying something like that. So what time of supply provision say? Bimal to date. Recipient making payment to the supplier advocate or his bank account debited. So maybe being recipient or bank account gets debited. Whichever is earlier. So you are debiting your bank account. So then date of payment would be your debit date. Whichever is earlier. So this first date of payment. Which you didn't do. Second says date following the end of. Date following the end of 60 days. Six zero. From the date of invoice or any other document issued by the supplier. So eventually, when you don't make payment, then 61st day, so 1st January at 60 days, 
that date would be the due date for discharging GST liability and the reverse charge method, irrespective of fact you paid to me or not. So this was time of supply. So second point connected. Come to the third point now. ITC input tax credit. Under reverse charge method, when you can avail ITC. So I'm not reading all the provision for the benefit of all audience. If you want to read time of supply for goods, time of supply for goods, they are the earliest of three dates. Date of receipt of goods, date of payment by the recipient, or date following the end of 30 days, 30. So section 12, subsection 3 talks about goods, time of supply. Section 13, subsection 3 talks about time of supply for services. Now come to the ITC, input tax credit. So today's audience is the very learned audience. They know the provision. They are answering also. They are trying to respond back to my query also. We are almost one hour now, but the way we are going, it looks like it's going so smooth. I really want that kind of active participation from you. Active participation from you. When ITC available, my first question goes to all of you. First question goes to all of you. Can you avail ITC Without GST payment, my first question, can you avail input tax credit without payment of GST and the reverse charge method? Please tell me. So Sunil is saying, Pius is saying, okay, oh, this time everyone is uh, categorically saying, sir, credit is available only when you make payment of GST, of GST. Now, one question I want to ask here. One question I want to ask here. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, pause, pause. Chat box, pause. Chat box, chat box, pause. So, when you make payment, we have all categorically said, okay, all right, come, come, come. Okay. See, there are two suppliers. Now listen carefully. Here I want your attention. That's the reason I'm telling you. Here I want to draw your attention. So listen now carefully. Pause for the timing in a chat box. Listen. Supplier supplying a notified goods or services. Supplier supplying notified goods or services. Under section 9, subsection 3, there may be a case that supplier is registered, but his supplies falling under reverse charge method. Listen very carefully. I really want you to listen very carefully. There is a supplier who is supplying notified goods or services it's registered supplier, then in all probability, he must be raising tax invoice. Only he would be taking reverse charge method. He would be taking reverse charge method as if liability is under reverse charge method. He would be raising invoice because he's a registered one. But since it is notified goods or services, he's taking GST to be discharged in the reverse charge method. Now you got the invoice from supplier being recipient. You got the invoice which states that this invoice is under reverse charge method. Now another supplier who is not registered, who is not registered, but he has supplied notified goods or services, notified goods or services. So when he's unregistered, then it is implied he has not raised the invoice. He has not raised the invoice. But in both the cases, but in both the cases, being a recipient, 
you need to discharge the GST liability. You need to discharge the GST liability. Now tell me which document would be called a document for availing credit in reverse charge method for availing credit. When registered supplier raising invoice, ticking reverse charge method liability, unregistered supplier not raising invoice, but still reverse charge liability. Tell me. Okay. Some answers are coming in. Okay. Perfect. Mayur is saying something like self invoice. Oh, great. So you. Yupreet is also saying, Bidusi is also answering. Well, well, well said, well said. All right, all right. Listen now, listen now, listen, listen. All right, payment voucher. All right. Rule 36, sub rule 1, sub rule 1 of CGST rule 2017 is says for availing credit. For GST paid under reverse charge liability, the document would be which you have raised under section 31, subsection 3, clause F. Section 31, subsection 3, clause F. And somebody has said here self-invoicing. So when you purchase from unregistered supplier, there the condition under section 31.3 subsection F being recipient, you should raise self-invoice. It may be consolidated monthly. Self-invoice to yourself. And then discharge the liability putting under table 3.1D of GSTR 3B. Table 3.1D of GSTR 3B and take credit under table 4 of the GSTR 3B. So, same month, you are availing credit and you are discharging the liability. Possible, permissible, provided you pay. You can avail credit in the same month. And what would be the document? The invoice which you have raised, payment voucher which you have raised to yourself for a document which is generated under section 31, subsection 3, clause F. Now, in ITC, one more point. One more point. Let's say I'm a supplier and this very tricky question. And I have not received right answer when I have posted this query at different platform. So I'm posting to this, you know, audience today and looking for the answer. Looking for the answer so that the audience can give me the answer. Look, let's say I'm a supplier. Let's assume I'm a supplier. I'm supplying uh, certain goods under forward charge method. My certain supplies under forward charge method. And my certain supplies under reverse charge method. So for taking this example, I'm drawing one practical example. Let's say my total turnover is 100. Out of total turnover 100, 50% is my forward charge liability and 50 rupees is my reverse charge liability. My reverse charge means whatever I'm supplying on which my buyer, my customer will pay GST liability. So I will not charge GST. So I'm a person, I got 100 rupees turnover on 50 rupees forward charge liability I'm charging collecting and depositing on 50 rupees i need not charge it is my recipient my buyer my customer will discharge and i got 10 rupees itc input tax credit itc 10 rupees in this example when 10 rupees is itc common itc assume common itc my total turnover 100, 50 rupees is my forward charge, 50 rupees my turnover falling under reverse charge, 
tell me what is the value of my ITC? What much? How much I can avail credit? Tell me quickly. I given very very uh, easy number calculation to you. I'm looking for the answer. Please tell me how much. How much I can avail credit? Please tell me. Only five. Yes. Only five. Perfect. Perfect. Those who are answering five, they are right. Because then uh, proportionally to the extent of my taxable supplies falling under forward charge, that is credit available to me. Now, having said all this thing, I have really given overview part. Now, what I will do, I'm going to have three case studies, three open case studies. Those are burning issues in reverse charge method, in reverse charge method. One is director fees paid by the company to the director that the recent advance ruling coming by Rajasthan Advance Ruling Authority in Claycraft India Private Limited. Claycraft India Private Limited. I will discuss this one advance ruling for reverse charge liability. I will discuss at length. You can just take down because I am going to discuss three open issues. First, second, with the SEJ unit. When you supply to SEJ unit or developer, and it is, uh, let's say, notified goods or services, reverse charge applicable for SEJ unit or developer. Second question. Second question. Open. And third, last date to avail credit. And this is a million dollar question. Adjoin date in the market. Last date to avail credit for 2018-19. We all know we are debating it is 20th October 2019. Whether this last date provision of section 16 subsection 4 is applicable for reverse charge liability. Maybe a 18-19 liability I'm paying now. Whether I can avail credit now. Section 16, subsection 4, last date criteria are not applicable. I'm going to discuss this open issue as a last item of my deliberation. So I've got three items which I need to deliberate as an open issues under RCM. If time permit, I will take GTA also. But now since my friend Rajat has got around with me and he want to make some uh, presentation, a short presentation, you stay back with me on uh, his OptoTax, uh, this particular software. Just see how they are providing each of business with their GST compliance, each of business. Over to Rajat. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, sir. You have explained everything so well. And so about OptoTax, uh, I think many of the attendees are already using that. But still, those of you who are not using Optotex, I will just give a brief about it. So Optotex is actually used by, trusted by 20,000 plus tax professionals. And this is exclusively free for all the tax professionals. We don't charge for Optotex from anybody, from all the tax professionals. So whether you are a CA, whether you are an advocate or a tax practitioner, you can just install Optotex. And the good part is, since the work from home is going on, since the lockdown period is going on, so it helps you to work from home. And you don't need to go to your offices. So, just you Gmail, chalate hai, the way you operate Gmail or Yahoo email. Similarly, Optotex, we have up browser se hi chala sakte hai. So, it's not like ki you don't need you don't need any server or you need any desktop. Agar aapke paas laptop hai, if you have a laptop, Optotex up kahin se bhi chala sakte hai. So, it works of any number of systems. It any number of users can use Optotex, and you can use from any time, anywhere. Uh, so another good part is from 1st July 2017, you will be able to see the data. So even if you have filed return from file ki hai, let's say you have filed from your portal or you have filed from your other softwares, no worries, you can still see the data in Optotex from 1st July 2017. With respect to security, we have all the due respective approvals from the government and we visited Ministry of Finance as well earlier. And the data is totally secured and you can use it uh, 
सो अभी ऑप्टोटेक्स का अगर मैं आपको शॉर्ट डेमो थोड़ा सा दिखाता हूँ स्लाइड्स में थोड़ा सा दिखाऊंगा सो वी फोकस मोर ऑन रिपोर्ट्स बिकॉज रिपोर्ट्स इज समथिंग जो बाकी पोर्टल या कोई नहीं देता है सो देर आर ओनली एट रिपोर्ट्स इन ऑप्टोटेक्स येस ओनली एट वी डोंट हैव हंड्रेड रिपोर्ट्स एंड दीज रिपोर्ट्स आर एक्चुअली बिल्ड फ्रॉम फीडबैक सो जो भी फीडबैक आपने दिया वॉट एवर फीडबैक यू हैव गिवन टू अस वी हैव नोटेड डाउन दैट फीडबैक एंड वी हैव प्रिपेयर द रिपोर्ट If I'll show you a uh, slide, so अगर आप देखेंगे GSTR 2A. Now this is the major challenge right now. You cannot download GSTR 2A for the whole year. So we have uh, given you GSTR 2A for the whole year in one single Excel. एक single Excel में आप पूरा download कर सकते हैं and uh, you can see for the whole year. पूरा आपको data दिखेगा irrespective of the number of invoices, whether 10,000, 15,000, any number of invoices. Second is the party wise report. So another feedback came is. सर पूरे साल का तो दे दिया बट पार्टी वाइज वी डोंट हैव पार्टी वाइज समरी सो वी हैव गिवन यू पार्टी वाइज समरी एज वेल सो ऑन सिंगल एक्सेल आप सारा पूरे साल का डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं इट विल गिव यू हाउ मेनी नंबर्स ऑफ हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ इनवाइज इनवाइज योर पार्टी हैज इशूज सब कुछ आप एक ही रिपोर्ट में देख सकते हैं कमिंग टू रेट वाइज समरी सो ये एक फीडबैक बहुत अच्छा आया था कि सर होता क्या है जब मेरे को बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट से मैच करना होता है मेरा परचेज तो जीएसटी आर में जो रेट वाइज है वो मैं नहीं मैच कर पाता तो हमने रेट वाइज आपको जीएसटी टू ए का डेटा दे दिया सो दैट यू आर एबल टू मैच विद योर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट नेक्स्ट इज परचेज वर्सेज टू ए रिकन्सिलेशन ये बहुत ज्यादा फीडबैक आया था कि सर ऑटोमेटिक परचेज रिकन्सिलेशन कर दीजिए सो वी हैव गिवन यू दैट यू हैव टू जस्ट रिपोर्ट दी डेटा इन ऑप्टोटेक्स एंड इट विल डू इट फॉर यू पूरे साल का रिकन्सिलेशन सर एक साथ हो जाता है फुल ईयर नेक्स्ट रिपोर्ट जीएसटी आर थ्री पी सो फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जुलाई टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन यू विल बी एबल टू सी द डेटा इन दिस एक्सेल क्वेश्चंस आते हैं सर पीडीएफ में क्यों नहीं देता टेल यू वन स्टोरी सो एक्सेल में जब कुछ भी चीज आ जाती है तो मेरा स्टाफ है आई रिमेम्बर विमल सर भी कोमल का एक एग्जांपल देते थे सो आई आल्सो आई आल्सो हैव दी सेम एग्जांपल तो कोमल जब भी होती है तो वो कहती है सर एक बार अगर डेटा मेरे एक्सेल में आ गया उसके बाद आई पुट फाइव एट आई पुट फिल्टर आप बस मुझे एक्सेल में दे दीजिए तो सिमिलरली वी हैव ऑल्सो गिवन यू द होल डेटा इन एक्सेल नेक्स्ट रिपोर्ट इज जीएसटी आर सो फुल ईयर जितना भी जीएसटी आर के इन्वॉइस आपने कहीं से भी फाइल करे Irrespective of from where you have filed, uh, we give you that. So अभी questions आ रहे हैं सर कैसे चलाना है how to install? मैंने आपके screen पर OptoTax का link दिया है. I've given you the uh, link for OptoTax on your screen. If you want, you can just click there and sign up. बहुत simple. It takes only two minutes to sign up. And I'll also give you the phone numbers where you can get the demo. Charges sir, we don't uh, we don't charge from tax professionals. It is exclusively free for tax professionals. And clients को नहीं देते हैं sir. So it is exclusively for you people. so you can use that gstr 3b and 2a reconciliation pure saal ka again reconciliation pure saal ka quarter ka monthly in single excel aap dekh sakte hain so this will give you an analysis ki actually aapke client ke form mein chal kya raha hai and this is the best time to analyze because we all are sitting at our home to hum dekh sakte hain ki kahan pe kya differences aa rahe hain 3b versus r1 similar to 3b versus 2a and the final report is itc ledger so itc ledger mein full year ka aapko transactions dikhti hain whatever amount you have deposited whatever amount you have withdrawn or whatever amount you have chalan jitne ka bhi banaya aapko sab ek hi report mein dikh jayega so these are the eight reports which will help you a lot and if you if i'll show you the screen so screen bahut simple hai ye screen hai sir optotex ka similar hai jaise aap google chrome mein chalate hain gmail chalate hain waise hi optotex ka dikhta hai so on a single screen you can see 500 clients 600 clients it you can add unlimited clients to your optotex and it will show you on one single page अनदर फीडबैक विच केम इज कि सर मेरे स्टाफ को मेरे को क्लाइंट बांटना डेटा uh, बांटना होता है मीन्स काम बांटना होता है हाउ टू डू इट सो वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ यूजर वाइज समरी ऑल्सो इन ऑप्टोटेक्स सो यू कैन सेग्रीगेट योर वर्क टू योर स्टाफ मेंबर्स एंड आप उनको लेट से अगर मेरी फॉर्म में एग्जाम्पल सौ क्लाइंट्स हैं सो आई कैन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव टू ईच ऑफ दी मेंबर्स ऑफ दी स्टाफ मेंबर्स द बेनिफिट यू विल गेट इज उससे क्या होता है जब लास्ट डेट होती है बीस तारीख आती है तो 20 तारीख को आप एटलीस्ट यू विल आस्क दी रिस्पेक्टिव पर्सन भाई सिर्फ उस 25 क्लाइंट का बता दो व्हाट इज रिटर्न स्टेटस सो डेलीगेशन अकाउंटेबिलिटी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी हम पढ़ते तो सब है बट एटली अप्लाई नहीं करते सो दिस विल हेल्प यू टू अप्लाई दैट फाइनल इज दी डैशबोर्ड पार्ट सो डैशबोर्ड इट इज वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल योर क्लाइंट्स फॉर फुल ईयर यू कैन सी द रिटर्न स्टेटस अलॉन्ग विद दर एंड नंबर एंड डेट ऑफ फाइलिंग एंड एक्नोलेजमेंट एज वेल एक ही स्क्रीन पर सब सर आपको डेट ऑफ फाइलिंग दिखता है ए आर नंबर दिखता है एंड एक्नोलेजमेंट दिखती है पूरे स्क्रीन पर सारा आपको दिख जाएगा एंड जी एस टी आर टू ए का जीएसओ एन भी है सर सो लेट्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू ऑटोमेटिकली रिकनसाइल विद योर टैली और सम अदर सॉफ्टवेयर यू कैन डाउनलोड जी एस ओ एन फाइल फ्रॉम हेयर एंड यू कैन अपलोड इट टू टैली फॉर योर ऑटोमेटिक
एंड टैली बिजी मार्क से अगर आपका कुछ डेटा है तो यू कैन एक्सट्रैक्ट दैट सेटअप इज वेरी सिंपल साइन अप करना है जैसे अभी आपने लिंक पे क्लिक करके साइन अप कर लिया होगा एंड यू कैन देन क्रिएट डेस्कटॉप शॉर्टकट बट प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज एड ऑल ऑल योर क्लाइंट्स इन बल्क बिकॉज देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू सी ऑल देयर रिटर्न स्टेटस सर आप मानेंगे नहीं मैंने देखा है एक एक फर्म में जाके आज भी ए आर एन नंबर सर हाथ से नोट करते हैं लोग और मे बी दे नोटेड इन वर्ड डॉक्यूमेंट समवेयर तो क्यों करते हैं मेरे को आज भी समझ नहीं आता अगर टेक्नोलॉजी आपको इतना हेल्प कर रही है ऑप्टोटेक्स का सर यूट्यूब पे चैनल है आप सर्च कर सकते हैं हाउ टू साइन अप हाउ टू इंस्टॉल एंड कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर मैं आपको अभी दे देता हूँ सपोर्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस बिकॉज सपोर्ट नहीं है तो फिर कुछ नहीं हो सकता इंडिया में एवरीबडी नीड सपोर्ट सो वी हैव क्रिएटेड लाइव चैट सिमिलर टू जैसे आप व्हाट्सएप पे चैट करते हैं सिमिलरली ऑप्टोटेक्स में भी चैट है वहां पे आप पूरा चैट कर सकते हैं नेक्स्ट इज ये नंबर है प्लीज आप नोट कर लीजिए सो वी हैव आर कस्टमर सपोर्ट इन हिंदी इंग्लिश तमिल तेलुगू ऑल लैंग्वेजेज वी हैव एंड प्लीज नोट डाउन दी रिस्पेक्टिव नंबर और मैंने अभी लिंक दे ही दिया है समबडी इज आस्किंग चार्जेस सर वी डोंट टेक चार्जेस फॉर ऑप्टोटेक्स यू कैन इंस्टॉल इट एंड इफ यू नीड एनी हेल्प और यू नीड एनी डेमो प्लीज कॉल दीज नंबर एंड मैंने लिंक भी दे दिया ऑप्टोटेक्स का आपके स्क्रीन पर आ रहा होगा सो यू कैन इंस्टॉल इट फ्रॉम देयर ऑल्सो आपको जान के सबको खुशी होगी वुड बी हैप्पी टू नो कि बिमल सर भी अपनी फर्म में ऑप्टोटेक्स चलाते हैं एंड आई एम रियली ग्लैड टू नो दैट मुझे बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है कि वो भी चलाते हैं और कुछ भी अगर आपका फीडबैक हो आई थिंक मेनी ऑफ यू वुड बी ऑलरेडी यूजिंग दैट बट स्टिल इफ यू हैव एनी फीडबैक प्लीज मेरे को दीजिएगा ई मेल आई डी ऑल्सो हैव गिवन चैट में चल रहा है सर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप बताइए व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप सर बिमल जी का हमारा सबका एक ही है सो ए टू जेड टेक्स कॉर्प का जितना अपडेट्स होता है वो ऑप्टोटेक्स में भी आता है एंड ऑप्टोटेक्स का जो होता है वो ए टू जेड में भी जाता है सो वी आर ऑलमोस्ट अ फैमिली फिर भी मैं आपको व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप का लिंक दे देता हूँ इफ यू वॉन्ट बट पहले ही अगर ऑप्टोटेक्स इंस्टॉल करना है वो कर लीजिए तब वो फिर लिंक ऑटोमेटिकली बिकॉज रिमूव हो जाएगा एंड दैट्स इट बिकॉज आई डोंट हैव एनी थिंग अदर टू शो एनी अदर थिंग टू शो इट्स सो सिंपल यू कैन डाउनलोड योर रिपोर्ट सी ऑप्टोटेक्स सिर्फ तीन काम करता है जो चाहिए सर वो रिपोर्ट देता है आपको पूरे साल की वो रिटर्न फाइल करता है सो यू कैन फाइल जी एस टी आर वन जी एस टी आर थ्री बी जी एस टी आर नाइन एंड दी फाइनल थिंग इज सेंडिंग रिमाइंडर्स टू क्लाइंट्स सो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट अभी जो है कि हमें क्लाइंट्स को रिमाइंडर्स भेजने होते हैं सो वी आर कमिंग अप विद फीचर यू कैन सेंड रिमाइंडर्स टू योर क्लाइंट्स ऑन व्हाट्सएप और समवेयर एंड दैट्स इट फ्रॉम माई साइड बाकी तो बिमल जी है ही प्लीज सर आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट सो सेल बी स्टार्ट नाउ देन Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll start so, this. Uh, just yeah. I got three now. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. So, audience, back. Three burning and open issues under reverse charge method. The first burning issues I've said, but in between I saw your chat box also. I was seeing that who all are writing what. somebody asked me about that uh, what is the igst implication on ocean freight in terms of mohit mineral judgment coming from gujarat high court what is the way forward i will try to make these open issues little you know crispy so that uh, i can take up more and more open issues but i will try to justify so that my crispy open issues are properly digested by you so now since you have seen everything now so i request all the audience to back once again the way we were doing before maximum half an hour left out for me so you have to be half an hour with me tune with me for half an hour half an hour now first directive fees paid by the company with a gst liable or not so look this particular topic uh, let me do this properly so that he can digest this there's recent advance ruling coming from claycraft india private limited and in this judgment it is being held that gst liable on directors remuneration now i have different way to look at this particular ruling see if director is providing services to the company as employment contract like whole time director and you are deducting tds under section 192 which is salary 
then believe me, no GST leaveable. No GST leaveable. For simple reason, entry 1, schedule 3, which clearly says services by employee to the employer in the course of employment is neither a supply of goods nor supply of services. Challenge before us, how to justify that this director is working in the capacity of employee to the company. First, the contract which is signed by director and company. Scoping of services. Its coverage under PF and ESI. And you are treating his remuneration as salary. That's the reason you are applying 192 for TDS deduction. Otherwise, you could have applied 194J, which you didn't do. You applied 192 as a salary. My conclusive view is no GST leaveable. Then when GST leaveable, next question. If it is not an employment contract, and director are giving services to the company other than employment contract, like nominee director, independent director, part-time director, and you're giving meeting fees to them. And they are not in lieu of employment. You're applying 194J of IT Act as a professional services, tedious deduction. If it is not employment contract, then GST leaveable. Question comes forward charge or reverse charge. It is reverse charge under entry 6, notification number 13 oblique 2017. Reverse charge method, company has to discharge the liability. Third, let's take an example that I'm a director I'm being paid 2 lakh rupees per month by a company when I'm giving services not as an employment contract, not under employment contract. So when I'm being paid this amount 2 lakh rupees per month, then company need to discharge GST liability under reverse charge method. Adding further. If let's say I'm having commercial property, commercial immovable property, I let out the same property to the company, same company, let's say ABC Limited, and I'm being paid 3 lakh rupees per month as a rental income, then question will be whether GST leaveable answer is quite yes. Commercial property, leaveable. Next question, so forward charge or reverse charge? Forward charge means as a director, I'm a supplier. I'm charging 3 lakh rupees per month. Total year becomes 36 lakh. More than 20 lakh threshold amount for registration. Whether it would be forward charge or reverse charge? Answer it. It will continue and to be under forward charge. It is not the services as director services in the capacity of director to the company. Next question. What happened? What happened for this advanced ruling which has come and creating havoc in the market? My answer. It is subject to appeal before appellate authority for advance ruling. And maybe we can assume that uh, appellate authority also decide in similar manner as being decided by advance ruling authority. Then I'm of the view, I'm of the view that we can go and file writ appeal before the high court Though you may say that under GST law, there is no appeal mechanism against the order of appellate authority of advance ruling. There is no mechanism. But 
recently in one of the judgment in kerala high court it is being held when uh, advance ruling authority or appellate authority for advance ruling is not handling question of law correctly and this is the case in the recent advance ruling i am of the view that this claycraft india private limited is not being correctly handled on question of law then uh, this appellant once they get judgment from appellate authority if it is going negative they can definitely go to rajasthan high court and i am of the view rajasthan high court will admit the appeal only because on the ground question of law is not properly dealt with next question you may ask sir what we should do we are not the appellant we are other party do we have any implication to my mind it carries the persuasive value no denial but it is not directly impacting to you advance ruling judgment is relevant and applicable to such appellant who has gone for advance ruling but i am of the view this may have persuasive value but not going negative to you and if it comes to you from the department rest assured you got lot of legal force to protect and conclude if director is giving services as employee to the company in employment contract 192 tds is being deducted under it act rest assured gst not liable and this was the case even pre gst era under service tax and got settled also wherever 192 tds is being deducted directors services are considered under employment contract no service tax was liable same footing can be adopted in gst law the first open issue second open issue second open issue is very very interesting and i would like to draw your attention and this is very interesting that's the reason i want you should participate with me section 16 subsection 4 what is the last date to avail credit you know that uh, for uh, financial year 2018 19 year 19 annual return and gstr 9c 9 and 9c due date is 30th june 2020 and we all are struggling what is the last date last date to avail credit for 1819 1819 section 16 subsection 4 is important but i am discussing today now you may have heard me on other platform that i am of the opinion that last date will not be 20th october 2019 i given my reasoning also why it is not applicable i sounded also but let me touch base so that this audience who is listening me on this topic because i want to draw from reverse charge perspective with the reverse charge liability of 1819 paid now can i take credit this is the you know point which i want to discuss with all of you so listen very carefully that's the reason i want your attention first what section 16 sub section 4 says that itc is not available to recipient pertaining to invoice or debit note which is of 1819 1819 and the last date would be earliest of two date what are the two date due date for furnishing return under section 39 which is gstr 3b i'm not going in a debate that 3b held as not a return under section 39 by gujarat high court now it is sub judice before honorable supreme court i'm not going to that debate but 3b under section 39 
of September following the end of financial year 2018-19. So September due date 3B is 20th October 2019. Or date of furnishing annual return of 18-19 which is 30th June 2020. Earliest of due date. So if there are 5 crore rupees for February and March, February and March 2019, you avail in December 2019, you may have got notices, lot of notices are being issued to the taxpayer, Pan India. Department is saying if you have avail credit after 20th October 2019, pertaining to 1819, you must reverse credit and reverse along with interest. This is the issue. You may watch my other videos wherein I've explained the subject matter and I've given my views that no, this is going contrary. And even the writ has been filed in Delhi High Court and other High Court. We had notice is being issued to the revenue, but because of COVID-19, nothing is moving as such now. It is to be seen in time to come. But my question, my open issue was a little different. Let me come to my open issue now. If there was, let's say, some reverse charge liability, I discussed that advocate. Take same advocate example, who gave the services on 1st January 2020. Now you assume he gave the services on 1st March 2019, 2019, financial year 1819, which you haven't paid to the advocate and you have not paid the reverse charge liability. Now since this debate is going on that what is the last date to avail credit for 1819, is applicable for reverse charge liability. If I pay now reverse charge liability, can I avail credit? This is the question. So I'm posting this query to all of you and looking for the answer from uh, each one of you. Please tell me if reverse charge liability paid now of 1819 credit is available. Say yes or no. Tell me yes or no. Yes or no? Okay. Lot many saying yes. Maulik is saying no. Aswani says no. Yes, no, yes, no. Mixed answers are coming out. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Okay. All right. Perfect. I've seen that. Now I want you to poch. Poch. As per me, if you look at arm of the view, arm of the view, which may be subjective, but I'm uh, framing my own opinion that for reverse charge liability, I end up paying reverse charge liability along with interest. Because of time of supply provision, you haven't paid to advocate does not mean that your GST liability got done away with. It will continue to be and it will be driven by time of supply provision. 61st day, time of supply. From then it was due. You didn't pay. You're paying now. So it is liable for interest. Point was with a credit can be restricted under section 16 subsection 4. Now look at me what is my conclusion and which you can see later. I'm telling you some provision also which help you to digest by yourself. See there the provision under section 31 subsection 3 clause F of CGST Act which says being a recipient I must raise the self invoice to myself, self invoice. If 
I have purchased goods, notified goods or services from unregistered supplier. So I must raise the self invoice. 31, subsection 3, clause F. So I raise the invoice. When I go to rule 36, sub rule 1, it says, Bimal, you can avail credit on following document, on following document, on following document. First, they say that uh, you can avail credit on invoice raised by the supplier, raised by the supplier under section 31, subsection 1 for goods, 31, subsection 2 for services. This is a separate provision. Another uh, sub rule says, Bimal, the self invoice which you generated under 31, 3F for reverse charge liability. You can avail credit on that particular invoice. So again, this rule goes further and say, for import of goods, you can take credit on bill of entry. Bill of entry. Now, why I'm saying all this thing to you? Just to draw your attention. When this rule 36, which talks about documents to avail credit, has segregated the document. They say document raised by supplier as a normal supplier of goods or services. Document raised by the recipient under reverse charge. Document by importer of goods. Document by ISD input service distributor. Meaning thereby. This rule 36 is creating some departure. So the reference of invoice and debit note, which is given under section 39, under section 39, this is assumed to be, to my mind, for a normal supply of goods or services. And I can also add here, if it is forward charge, normal liability, invoice raised by the supplier, then I should have taken credit on accrual basis. Need not require to be paid. Only six months criteria comes. So when I receive the invoice, I can take credit on accrual basis, irrespective of payment made. But reverse charge, even though self-invoice generated, but credit is not available unless paid. So some difference between forward charge and reverse charge. So to my mind, even though I raised the invoice, but that was condition that credit available only on payment. Hence, if 1819 liability invoice generated, but not paid, which paid now. So my availing criteria satisfied now, hence credit is available. I hope I'm being able to clarify. I want to see in a chat box whether you really got it or not. You tell me in a chat box whether you got it right or wrong. Tell me, yes, you got it. Tell me, no, if you, you haven't got it. I will repeat again then. Tell me in a chat box. Yes, you got it. Say yes. Sir, quite understandable and logic is quite uh, getting to our mind. That for reverse charge, yes. Okay. So maximum are saying, okay, so maximum are saying, okay, 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 all right, all right, so, uh, okay, all right, wait, pause. Uh, dear friends, uh, there are some of the guys, they wanted me to repeat again. And this is technical, which is being deliberated pan India now. And divergent perspectives are coming out. For the sake of brevity, I'm taking two minutes more, two minutes more. Let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. Let me repeat again so that, you know, it will help to those who haven't got it. Just, 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 just wait, just wait, just wait. Sugata, I'm, I'm repeating again. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. I'm saying that. Rule 36 
is saying what are the document to avail credit and in that rule they have said you can avail credit on invoice of your supplier so when supplier charging gst and the forward charge like under 31 subsection 1 for goods and 31 subsection 2 for services listen very carefully very carefully and then rule 36 further says rule 36 further says bimal you can avail credit on your own invoice which you generated under 313 f reverse charge method further says bill of entry for import of goods further says invoice of isd so i'm finding there are different documents prescribed for availing credit under rule 36. So whenever my supplier charging GST and they are under forward charge, then invoice generated under 31.1 and 31 subsection 2. But now differentiating for reverse charge invoice generated under 31.3F. Right? So I'm first getting that two kind of document they are referring to. So when I go to section 16, subsection 4, and they are referring invoice, then I'm finding when my supplier charge GST on forward charge, I can avail credit without payment. Only six months criteria, I need to make payment. But reverse charge, there is no such criteria. I can avail credit as and when I pay the GST liability. As and when I pay the GST liability. So I'm finding there is some uh, difference of invoice generated by supplier and invoice generated for reverse charge liability. And second, I'm concluding if my self invoice and the reverse charge which I should have generated if I assume 1st March 2019 in the date of supply of service of advocate. I have not generated or if I generated already but not paid the liability, credit is not available to me till the time I pay under reverse charge. So even though invoice exists under reverse charge but credit not available, Till the time I pay, but forward charge credit available, six months window is being given to me. So I'm creating difference. So for reverse charge, there's the invoice available. Credit should have been taken on that invoice, provided I have paid the liability. Since I haven't paid the liability, credit not available. So the credit would be available when condition of payment is satisfied. Hence, I'm of the view that for reverse charge, section 16, subsection 4 is not applicable. That is what my conclusion. Maybe we have a difference of opinion. And for reverse charge, you should be knowing that it never comes in two way. You plug the number. You plug the number. So I'm, I'm just, you know, creating example and saying everything in totalistic viewpoint. Now, having said everything, since time is the porch, I cannot carry on, you know, deliberating. But I given my thought to you that uh, credit and a reverse charge for 1819, why 1819, 1718 also you can avail on payment basis. But you have to pay interest for discharging reverse charge GST liability as per time of supply provision. And that interest would be lost. Having said that, now coming to the next open issue, SEJ. When uh, I'm supplying to SEJ. Say when uh, I'm supplying to SEJ unit or developer, it is zero rated under section 16 of IGST Act. Section 16 says my supply, I'm a DTA, normal supplier of goods or services. When I'm supplying to SEJ unit or developer, it is called zero rated. 
I can supply either on payment of IGST or I can supply without payment of IGST, but I need to execute LUT or bond. And then I go for refund of ITC input tax credit. So being a normal supplier, I'm supplying to SCJ unit. It is called zero rated. Question starts from here. Now you have to participate here. Now 10 minutes more and then uh, we will uh, reach to the conclusion part. If I'm a normal supplier, supplying to SCJ unit or developer, and let's assume that is notified goods or services. Let's assume notified goods or services. Notified goods or services. Then it is reverse charge liability. So this question is coming from all corners and they are being asking me throughout, sir, whether SEJ unit has to discharge reverse charge liability. Do they require to take registration? Now to answer to all of you, please, please. SEJ are always considered as a free trade zone. Free trade area. Now answer could be, answer number one. If I'm in Delhi, I'm a normal supplier. And my SEJ is also in Delhi. If I supply to SEJ unit, it becomes interstate supply, even though within the same state, under Section 7, Subsection 5, IGST Act. It becomes interstate supply. And because of interstate, Bimal Jain has to take compulsory registration. If Bimal Jain take compulsory registration, where is the question of reverse charge to be paid by SEJ unit? Where is the question of reverse charge to be paid by SEJ unit? First argument. Second argument. Let's assume advocate giving services to SEJ unit. And both are in Delhi. Though it is interstate supply. But for sure SEJ unit will not... Uh, but for sure, this advocate will not take registration, even though it is interstate supply. Advocate will not take registration. Now question comes, advocate in Delhi giving services to SEJ unit in Delhi. It is interstate supply, but advocate will not take registration. What happened in this case with the reverse charge in the hands of SEJ applicable? My answer to all of you before I answer it, can I check in the chat box? In such case, with the reverse charge to be paid by SEJ unit, tell me in your chat box answer. Please tell me, chat box, quickly, yes or no, whether this RCM to be paid or not paid. Amit, Jinal, okay, Indrajita, okay, so many yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. All right. Come, come to a point, come to a point, not an issue, not an issue. Those you have answered. If you're saying no, if you're saying no reverse charge in the hands of SEJ unit, is it not tantamounting that for the same transaction reverse charge applicable had it happened in DTA? Had it happened in DTA, reverse charge was applicable just because it is to SEJ unit an advocate giving interstate supply and not taking registration. You are saying SEJ need not pay the reverse charge. To my mind, SEJ can pay reverse charge liability and take refund thereof. Can discharge GST liability 
and take refund thereof. And that is called revenue neutral. That is called revenue neutral. You pay and take refund. So what we need? We need clarity from the government. Why then first instant SEJ is required to pay under reverse charge and then take refund? They may clarify like form A2. Form A2, it was there in a service tax era. Where an SEJ was not supposed to pay. So maybe some form can be envisaged in GST to done away with this dispute of reverse charge to be paid by SEJ unit. Because this is not the payment only, it's the registration and GST compliances. Coming to the last open issue, ocean freight. Somebody has asked me, some Gurinder who was there, I could see he asked me. Okay, Gurinder was asking me, sir, why IGST? And what is the implication of this uh, Mohit, Mohit mineral case coming from Gujarat High Court? See, foreign supplier is taking services. Okay, foreign supplier is taking services from foreign shipping company and paying the freight. It is all happening outside India. Supplier outside India, recipient outside India, but by deeming fiction, importer of goods is being charged to pay IGST on that freight component, wherein Importer has already paid custom duty on CIF value plus one percent assessable value. He has discharged IGST on ocean freight when imported goods. Again, he was asked to pay IGST on freight component separately. This was a debate in the court, and Gujarat High Court, Honorable Gujarat High Court, has given a lengthy 142 page judgment and says no GST can be levied on ocean freight. No GST can be levied on ocean freight. Once custom duty which includes IGST has been paid on CIF value and it was held uh, this provision of GST ultra bias. Now, what is the way forward? To my mind, this judgment which is given by Honorable Gujarat High Court, it to me looks like a very good judgment. I'm sure department going to file SLP in the Supreme Court against this judgment, which is not yet filed. They will look at this judgment and uh, will take their own conscious call. But it is quite obvious why double taxation? Double taxation cannot be levied on the pretext credit is available. What happened if this guy is engaged in exempted goods? Then double taxation create more cascading. So there are a lot many reasons for this uh, IGST component on ocean freight. It cannot be justified as credit is available. Hence, let's carry on with the double taxation. Even I'm of the opinion that this judgment will, I'm sure, what is sustained in the Supreme Court? I'm sure about it. Sure about it, it is going to sustain. But what happened in case you have paid GST, IGST on ocean freight, of which you have availed credit? If you have availed credit, then uh, there's only working capital blockage. But if you are engaged in exempted goods, then you should file your refund claim. That would be my advice to you. Go and file your refund claim. And in case you got notices from the department, litigate the matter and rely this Gujarat High Court judgment Mohit Mineral case. So I have done uh, four open issues at length. We are almost just reaching three, four minutes left out. So I will try to see if something which I can answer on a query but uh, somebody was asking me, sir, uh, in recent, in some of the webinar, I have given my number to all the audiences. 
so my mobile is now full my mobile is full with uh, a lot of you know messages coming keep coming uh, since morning pipping in like pinging like anything and uh, they are trying my number also let me request you like you know you are also you know passing your days i'm also you know passing my days we all are loving and enjoying this passion i will be able to answer your queries on whatsapp but very difficult for me to pick up a call for so many calls keeps coming you can whatsapp time permit i will definitely respond you back my commitment to you some paras khurana was there in the audience i don't know whether he's there or gone was checking out whether my number is the same number of course you can uh, always uh, you know send your good suggestion feedback you can appreciate in case you have liked the presentation also in case you feel like yes you like my presentation then of course uh, it would be of my satisfaction of course my same number which you said paras but uh, try to appreciate my position that uh, i am also you know within 24 hours deadline i am trying my best whatever best possible from my side so maybe for you audience those who are still uh, you know sticking with uh, and looking for giving so much i am sharing my number in case you are not having you can also note down my number rajat knows my number but nice i am helping to all you guys you can always write back your word of appreciation your constructive suggestion your query as well time permit i will definitely respond back but in case i don't pick up your call don't be annoyed feel like your brother brother is highly occupied he is doing whatever best he can do this during covid 19 time period and giving so much open heart and these opinion are free of cost going free of cost to all of you okay so take my number 9810604563 so i given my number to all of you look forward that uh, your uh, feedback suggestion appreciation constructive suggestion and query this is sure i will try my best to respond back with a time permit but in case i don't pick up don't take me other way around keep loving keep loving me your love is really important to me because that's motivate me to do much better and better and that's what i'm doing and trying at all time wishing each one of you time is a pause i wanted to take up some of the questions also but your feedback suggestion uh, is so good so nice can i just ask one question maybe we are left out with 500 plus audience i'm seriously thinking i need your answer i'm seriously thinking to start one gst course during uh, i'm sure that this uh, 3rd may again going to be extended in a phase manner i'm really thinking seriously to start some gst course uh what is your say should i start or no say yes or no so that i can get the feedback from you know with audience saying yes maybe i would be happy that yes i must start okay so from my side my side there is a big yes always <laughs> <laughs> no you are your good friend of mine so you always say yes i am looking other participants those who are still on and watching me what they say if they are willing then i must take up because i just i was seriously thinking today that whether i should start gst course during this covid 19 time period at least i can do in a programmed manner in a very customized manner structured manner so that it helps everyone and this time everyone can participate i'm getting all yes yes from everyone so let's see i will come back with my you know announcement on this line but allow me to th- say thanks to each one of you for listening so carefully patiently take care of yourself stay at home safe and fight with covid 19 together we we will defeat corona yes god bless all of us thank you very much over to rajat Rajat are you there?
I do not know something uh, wrong at the Rajat end, but let me convey once again from uh, both of us, from Rajat and uh, from my side, I'm thanking each one of you for the part of this today's webinar and your active participation. Thank you very much for your love and affection. That makes me really motivated. And uh, kindly pass on positive messages. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter for regular update. Watch all regular videos which I'm uploading and with the content and uh, wherein I'm discussing a lot of things. Even I created two video on YouTube channel, which is time to use uh, COVID-19 time period, how to generate interest in uh, GST, lot many things are there from my side. Kindly subscribe to my all social media channel. Be in touch. And I always believe Sapka Saad, Sapka Biswas. Rajat is gone. I do not know something wrong at his hand. But nevertheless, I'm taking this initiative to convey my vote of thanks to each one of you. Once again, my bestest love to each one of you. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.